This is the new Ferrari F8 Tributo, Ferrari's replacement for the 488 GTB. Now, we're going to do three things with it in this film. We'll show you everything that's new about this car and drive it on the road. But first, early in the morning, we've been given two or three laps around Ferrari's own Furano circuit. Remember to subscribe below if you like this video. Here we are on the Furano test track in the new Ferrari F8 Tributo. Essentially, this is the car with the Pista engine, but an evolution of the 488 GTB chassis and about 10% extra downforce, which maybe we'll find out about now. So we've got 710 brake horsepower, 568 pounds foot of torque, and in race mode, the traction control is just phenomenal. The first edition of the F8 Tributo that you need to know about is the new Ferrari Dynamic Enhancer Plus. To simplify Ferrari's very technical explanation, there were a lot of graphs in the presentation. This is a tweaked version of the existing Ferrari Dynamic Enhancer that now works across the full gamut of driver modes, subtly breaking each individual wheel to control your, making the car faster still out of corners. A whole 6% faster out of corners than a 488 GTB no less, which is um, not a lot. But in this sector, no performance gain goes unheralded. And it's flipping heck, it's fast. So you can really get on the throttle early and the thing just goes. It's that very slightest sensation that it's helping you. But on the whole, it's just freakishly agile. And this engine, so it's turbocharged, we're on maybe the third generation of turbocharged engine now, there is no lag, it just pulls and pulls. They say they made it sound better as well, it does, although it's hard to tell inside the helmet. But unlike, say, a McLaren engine where you get this big rush of torque after nothing happening, in this thing, it doesn't matter what the gear, put your foot down and it just goes. There is so much performance. Right, we're going to switch to CT off now, which is where the new slide slip control, we're now on to 6.1 comes in. And this should give us a bit of playful oversteer on the limit. It's still there, you can still feel it working away in the background, but it is very, very intuitive. You can just feed the throttle in and the car starts to rotate, and as long as you are on top of the steering and the throttle, it just gives you quite a lot to play with. Turn in third gear and just ride the throttle out. It's very, very clever and it inspires confidence. You can really start to work the car in the corners. Pretty much safe in the knowledge that the electronic guardians have got your back. <laughs> oh my word. Now, around Pirano here, it's not quite as quick as the Pista, but frankly, when you're talking half a second, good luck to you if you can notice. <laughs> oh, dearie me. This is a fantastic piece of kit. They say it's too ball for the road, and we'll find out about that in a minute, but if you're doing occasional track days in your Ferrari, I think you're gonna have quite a lot of fun. Okay, so we've mucked around in the F8 Tributo on the track, but Ferrari claim that most of the owners of this car will be using it on the road, and that's where it's been developed to be best suited. So, yes, it's got pista bits of aerodynamic and engine, but it's a road car first and foremost, and you can tell that from this first moment you sit in here. Now, the interior is recognisably 488, but there's been some jiggling around, so we've got some 812 Superfast style air vents here, some nice leather trim, soft carpets. The steering wheel's a bit smaller, which makes it easier to navigate on these tight corners. But it feels like a more grown up, comfortable, luxurious place to spend time. And I don't know why you'd bring this out on high days and holidays, because if you just put the auto transmission in its auto mode, so the seven speed dual clutch, just let it do its own devices, and it just shifts up seamlessly and early, stick the dampers in their bumpy road setting, and the car, I mean, it's kind of freaky how it deals with bumps. There's some brittleness there over really rough stuff, but it just 
sails over most stuff. There's a real suppleness there. It's, it's everyday usable, and the engine, you're always conscious that it's there, but, you know, in sport, it will settle back on a cruise, and you can just sort of, you can use it every day. It's not a car that gets on your nerves. It's really usable. But obviously, it's a Ferrari, so we don't want to know about it being usable or practical. We want to know what it's really like to drive, and, well, with a 488 GTB as a base and the, the piece to bits, this car is pretty sensational. Obviously the engine dominates, so this twin turbocharged unit, we're getting used to it now. This variable torque delivery that sort of ramps up the amount of torque you get so you get this instant throttle response I mean it is so fast that you could leave it in sixth or seventh gear and on most roads it would rinse a hard driven hot hatch but you don't want to do that you want to use all the revs and flip it heck <laughs> it is rabidly fast and it just spins up to 8,000 in the blink of an eye and it's, whoo, it's really, really, well, fast. I mean, it's so, so quick. You begin to ask yourself, how much faster do I need to go on the road? And because that throttle response is so instantaneous, I mean, there is, there is the merest hint of a delay as the turbos spool up, but we're talking barely noticeable. You just put your foot down, this thing goes. So what is new here? Well. Apart from the F8 Tributo name, the main structure of the car is 488 GTB, which means it carries that car's roof and doors. However, the rest of the bodywork is entirely new, and that has been done in the name of aerodynamics. Now, Ferrari claimed that the aerodynamic efficiency of this car is about 10% better, so that means 10% more downforce. Now, a lot of that comes from the front here, where we've got an S-duct. Uh, which is a development of the one first seen on the 488 Pista. There's also air vents above the headlamps which feed across the front wheels. Now on our car we have the alloy wheels. There is now a carbon fibre wheel option which saves a total of 40 kilograms over the 488 GTB. With the standard wheels the saving is 30 kilograms of the whole car. Moving further down we have this new air intake here. Now previously on the 488 GTB this fed the intercooler and the engine. On the F8, the engine is now fed from the back here with a shorter inlet, meaning uh, a much better um, combustion process. And it leaves all this vent open for the intercooler, which means overall inlet temperature is now down by 15 degrees. So moving around to the back, we've got the most obvious change here. We've got a Lexan rear window, which is a lightweight material, and it's got some slats cut in it, which we're told is influenced by the Ferrari F40. Speaking of influences, these four lights here that's meant to be F355 and 288 GTO, which I think you can pretty much see it's in there. Um, in terms of the aerodynamics, so we've got a blown rear wing, which we saw on the Pista. Now this is a carbon fiber unit on this one, uh, and it generates about 25% of the extra 10% of downforce, and 20% of the extra downforce comes from underneath here, the new rear diffuser, which has the three adaptive flaps that open and close to either increase downforce or reduce drag. Now, let's have a look at the engine. Okay, so what we have here is essentially the same 3.9 litre twin turbocharged V8 as in the uh, Pista. So that means the same titanium com rods, flywheel to reduce the inertia of the engine, makes it rev more freely. For the Tributo, we've also got shorter intake trumpets for better response, and this natty crackle red finish uh, here for the, the intake plenums. Now, obviously you can have that in carbon fiber. What else have we got? Well, the power figures are pretty impressive. It's pretty much Pista, so it's 710 brake horsepower at 8,000 RPM, and torque is 568 pounds foot at 3,250. Now, like the GTB and the Pista, it's got this torque management system, so you only get full torque in seventh gear, the engine ramping up the torque gradually, so you get this naturally aspirated feel. Also new to meet the ever stricter emissions regulations is a petrol particulate filter. Now, where that is in the exhaust system, it cuts some of the engine note noise. So to counter that, Ferrari have created what they call, and I kid you not, this is what it's called, the hot tube. And that runs from just the other side of the turbo, up the C pillar here, and over the driver's left shoulder. And that pipes the noise, the resonances, 
into the cabin to create a more dramatic sound. It's all totally natural. There's no uh, artificial augmentation, nothing through the speakers. Um, and as we'll find out, it works pretty well. The sound, we've got this hot tube running through the C-pillar up over my uh, left shoulder here. And it does help. There's a, there's a more mechanical feel to the engine note now. It's grittier. It's still not 458. We're never going to get that naturally aspirated sound back. And that's just the way it is. But this works. Putting it so close to the turbo means you get a little bit of turbo whistle there. And I'm sure some people will find that a little off-putting. But it all adds to the drama, the sound. It's a different multi-layered sound now. And this gearbox just pull a paddle, bang, next gear, pull a paddle, bang, next gear. It's so fast and yet you get these lovely little downshift blips of the throttle. It's such a good thing to drive. <laughs> My good God. I mean, I don't know how long I'd spend in prison if I were caught opening it up in third and fourth gear for prolonged periods. It is so rapid. Now the steering is that typical Ferrari pin sharp quick you turn in and the nose just bites and with the improved side slip control now the quick steering just loads up the whole chassis just so and you can just see it feel that over the rear axle and then you can feed in the throttle and steer the car just on the edge of grip on the throttle knowing that the systems are going to keep an eye on you it's really intuitive and the smoother you are with it the more it gives you special mention has to go to the brakes which have been tuned for better feel and response and you can really lean on them in the braking zones there is so much stopping power and they're getting close now to Porsche levels of progression and feel you can almost just sense the point of lockup even in these ones which has got the which have got the carbon ceramic options it's a car that you can drive with a, a confidence you just wouldn't expect of a 710 brake horsepower mid-engine Ferrari. It goads you into driving quicker, into leaning on the grip. And again, the engine has its part to play there because you can meet out the power so precisely. You can lean on the grip in a way that maybe, say, a McLaren with its more explosive delivery just has you second-guessing a bit more. I mean... <laughs> Oh my word, you couldn't drive it like this in the UK, only in Italy, only in Italy. Do you feel like you can drive a Ferrari with quite so much vim? The scary thing is each generation gets better and better and faster and faster. We're talking degrees over the 488 GTB, but it's noticeable the Pista bloodline DNA is only lightly sprinkled, but it's enough. Genuinely, I don't think there are other cars of this type that you would want to drive so quickly over these roads. It's the damping control, the suspension. These are pretty lumpy, ripped and torn roads. And yet in other cars where you'd be waiting for that sickening crash as it bottoms out, the Ferrari just sort of glides over it. There's the occasional getting near the end of suspension travel, but it just checks, takes it in its stride. And again, you just can cover ground at an astonishing rate. <laughs> oh my word. Yeah, I mean, this car is frankly crackers, but in a good way. So should you buy one? Well, if you're in the market for a 700 horsepower mid-engine two-seater coupe, then the answer has to be, oh yes, it's arguably the best car of its type. It allows you to exploit its performance like no other, particularly on the road. It's just so engaging, so confidence inspiring. But what I would say is, if you do, don't just take it out on high days and holidays. Use it every day, use it whenever you can, because cars like this need to be driven and enjoyed because I suspect we're not going to be able to do it for as long as we'd like to think. Now this car is called the F8 Tributo 
because it's meant to celebrate 40 odd years of mid-engine V8 Ferraris. And it's also a celebration of the fact this engine, this twin turbocharged engine, has won a multitude of awards, say 15, I think, in the last five years. But I suspect it's also called Tributo because it's celebrating the last of a line, the last type of car like this. I don't think there'll be another one. I think this is going to be the last pure internally combustion engine, mid-engine V8 Ferrari there is. The next one will probably have hybridization and will be even faster and and maybe even better, but it won't have this car's soul, I suspect. So get it while you still can. What a cracker's automobile. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch one of several autocar videos on the 488, then click on the screen now. And to make sure you never miss another one of our supercar tests, hit subscribe now and turn on notifications.